Hey, what's up? It's Matt, and every now and then I will come across something that was interesting or important, and I think, wow, these are things I should have learned in school. Let's begin. First, bone dust. Starting off on a light note today, when someone is cremated, we call their remains ashes, but they're not technically ashes. In fact, the only thing that survives the cremation process is bone and metal, and there are no ashes when it is done. Afterwards, the bones are ground up in a blender-like thing called a cremulator, and that is the ashes. It's bone dust. Also, places that do cremation are called crematoriums, which, if you don't know any better, sounds like an emporium of ice cream. Second, what is this painting, and why is it so famous? This is The Great Wave by Japanese painter Katsushika Hokusai, and arguably the most famous Japanese artwork in, of all history time. Originally titled Under the Wave of Kanagawa, it was created in the early 1830s as part of a collection called 36 Views of Mount Fuji. Now, there were 35 other pieces in this 36 View collection, so why did this one become famous? Well, there's no one answer, but it's probably a combination of things. It combines Eastern artistic style with Western use of perspective. It used a shade of blue from Germany that was new to Japan at that time. Some historians say that because this was being widely circulated around the time a big tsunami hit Japan in 1896, the image of this work of art and the idea of a tsunami became linked in people's minds. But the most important reason might be that this work was meant to be a popular art. It was cheap and accessible, and not something that only the super wealthy and learned could admire. These reasons probably encouraged its circulation inside and outside of Japan, and I guess now we are where we are today, with its fame and whatnot. Number three, dimensional analysis. This sounds complicated, but I promise it's not. It's just a way of converting one unit of measurement to another. And I will show you, so please indulge me as we go Vihart for a second. Let's say we want to convert 17 kilometers into inches. So what we're going to do here is make a new fraction, put it in the denominator, and make it one. Then in the numerator, we're going to put a comparable unit, like meters, and however many of that unit go into the kilometer. And then we repeat the process. So we put one meter in the bottom, and however many of a comparable unit, like feet, go into one meter. So now we'll do the same thing again with feet and put one foot in the denominator, and of course 12 inches in the numerator. And now watch what happens when you multiply all of these together. Kilometers cancel out meters cancel out, feet cancel out, and you're left with just inches. So 17 times 1,000 times 3.28 times 12 is 669,120. And there you have it, now we're at inches. Technically, I did learn this in school, but I should have learned it much earlier because it would have helped with a lot of stuff, and I spent a lot of time confused on this when I had to learn it, so there you go, dimensional analysis. Four, men and women have Adam's apples. I'm hoping this series stays as tishless and doesn't become things everyone knows except me and somehow I didn't know, but I was under the impression that only men had Adam's apples because you see them on men very prominently and it turns out that men and women have them. So Adam's apples are just bony cartilage wrapped around the larynx, or voice box. Men and women start out having a similarly sized voice box, but when puberty comes around, men's grow a lot more than women's do. And that's why men have deeper voices. But this extra growth also means that the Adam's apple grows a lot more for men and becomes prominent. Women have them too, but we don't see them because their voice boxes aren't as big. Also, this doesn't do anything except make shaving kind of a pain. Fifth and finally, where does bottled water come from? This might seem like an obvious question because, you know, look at the bottle. There are springs and mountains and nice crap. But between 25 and 40% of bottled water is actually just tap water, sometimes purified and sometimes not. Bottlers might not even be required to list where they got their water from. In one case, there was a spring water thing that had mountains and a river and nice stuff, but it turns out they just got their water from a well in a parking lot next to a hazardous waste dump. And the FDA has very little rules regulating the quality of bottled water, and some of its rules are actually weaker than EPA standards set for public water. According to tests done by the National Resource Defense Council, a lot of bottled water is good quality, but also around a third breached contamination standards. Also, in a lot of blind studies, people just prefer tap water to bottled water, so we're just getting screwed all around here. All right, cool. Well, that was things I should have learned in school too. So uh, I'm probably gonna keep doing this. Thanks for watching. Adios.